was busy listening to my music on the laptop, typing, writing my reports. When a certain man crept behind me and I didn't even notice, the next thing I felt was that man pinching my arm. Hello, 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 friends. Welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. My name is Wes Nyaniwa Susola, your usual host. Today we are talking about sexual coercion at the workplace. And by sexual coercion, I'm talking about non-consensual sexual advances towards work colleagues. And it may take different forms, three different forms, in fact. It can come through force, it can come through seduction, or it may come through manipulation, whereby somebody orchestrates over a period of time by putting ideas in your mind through their action, through their speech. So those are the three different forms which sexual advances, sexual coercion can take place. Force, seduction, manipulation. And against popular belief, both men and women can fall victims or they can be villains of this sexual coercion. The only difference are the antics employed by either men or women to coerce the other. So today we are talking about what are the predominant antics used by men for sexual coercion, what are the predominant antics used by women for sexual coercion, what are my personal life experiences in this sexual coercion, and what actions can you take to escape this sexual coercion at the workplace. So, we'll start with the popular predominant antics used by men in the workplace for sexual coercion. Number one, making provocative nasty comments. Commenting about a woman's body, commenting about a woman's behind, commenting about a woman's boobs, about a woman's legs, and so on and so forth. Making comments like, Hey, commande mulindi katu mbatu. Hey, commande mulindi mbu yodu. Hey, commande mulindi mabele abu inodu. Something like that. Nasty comments, provocative comments, just to coerce you into sex. Number two, if they are a boss or a leader, they may deny you even a promotion, even though you have merited it, even though you've performed very well in your appraisal, they still deny you a promotion. The worst comes to the worst. They may put you in a vulnerable position by forcing you into sex through rape, maybe calling you over the weekend for work, asking you to work over hours just because they want to take advantage of you and rape you, force you into doing sexual activities with them. And another uh, antic that they may use is they may be making humiliating comments against you in the presence of even their friends, humiliating you all the time so that you can become weak and fall victim to sexual activity with them. And the last predominantly uh, way that men use sexual antic is by spreading false rumors against you. Hey, telling their friends that they have slept with you before. Falsely making those, spreading those rumors. And people may think that really you've slept with that person in order to boost their ego or prop up their image. And it's really painful for somebody to make those false accusations against you. So, those are some of the predominant antics that can be used by men. Now, what are the predominant sexual antics used by women? Rarely do women rape men, maybe because of strength. Of course, I've heard of women raping small boys, but they have really perfected the art of seduction, passive aggressiveness, seducing you. And the art of seduction has been around for ages. We can look from the Bible, talk of Ruth, who once dressed up nicely, wore her perfume, went to the threshing floor. This was a place where men were working at the threshing floor and Boaz was there sleeping after a day's hard work and she went in her good perfume, her good clothes and slept under Boaz's covers. And when Boaz woke up in the middle of the night, he was surprised that he was feeling some softer skin. Oh, this is soft skin. Who is it? Who is this? I am Ruth. You are my um, kinsman redeemer. You have to marry me. So it's like Ruth in the Bible literally seduced Boaz. And since that seduction, Boaz did not sleep until he made Ruth his wife. 
So those are some of the antics you can see coming from the Bible. And um, another way that women may use is just words in a soft way, using words in order to coerce you for sexual activity. They may use body language, eh? chola, making some type of uh, body language or touching their hair or touching themselves. And you may really get coerced that if they want sexual activity or sometimes even making provocative, suggestive comments. Something like, hey, komande mungo di siya siya. Hey, inu tu summa banga kari woset. Why are you just looking at me? You can't do anything to me. Yeah? Something like that. Or even in dressing seductively, you are going to work, but you're putting on a very short attire or very fitting clothing instead of wearing in a professional manner, dressing properly and decently, yet you know that you'll be in the presence of men. And men usually, they fall victim, they fall prey to such sight of a woman. If all things fail, some of the women you can even make false accusations against men just to punish them and fulfill their ego. They may say, oh, this man was making such advances. For my life experiences, there was a time when I was in my office. It was a long office. I was busy working on my desk, on my computer. The desk was against the wall, so my chair was facing against the wall. The door was behind me. So I was busy listening to my music on the laptop, typing, writing my reports. When a certain man crept behind me and I didn't even notice, the next thing I felt was that man pinching my arm. I had worn a short sleeve blouse unknowingly. And I was just startled like this. I looked and I saw that it was that man from the other office, my work colleague. And wow, that man regretted the day he was born because when he did that, I just rose and I rebuked him. I said, why are you doing this? Never do this kind of thing to me again. And he just stood there. He didn't say anything because of the way I had acted against him. And I'm, I'm saying there are so many people. I mean, he was even married. I said, why is he even acting like this? I've had some type of men coming to me and telling me that let's go to the field together. And the way you'll be talking about going to the field, you really know that this person thinks that I can really go there just be, be with him in a sexual manner. Huh? So those are the, some of the antics that can be employed by men in order to coerce you into sexual activity. Or thinking that they can take advantage of you just because they have got money. So I tell them that I also have got resources. What are you talking about? One thing that I forgot to mention, most married men usually they have got this false perception that it is better to go for married women. We should go for married women. They keep secrets better. That is it. And I think that's why that particular guy was coming to me and pinching my arm. Finally, what do you do when you find yourself in that situation whereby somebody is trying to coerce you, is making sexual advances against you? One. Once you have noted any signs, do not entertain it. They start slowly and they grow on you. You may just give them that side eye to say, don't do this. Don't start doing this. Be careful. Don't even try. Don't smile at nasty comments. Don't smile and rebuke the moment it happens. I do not entertain nasty comments. Don't do it. Never do it again. Call them out immediately. Call it out immediately. Let them know that sexual harassment is not accepted. You can tell them that this is sexual harassment. It is not um, accepted at the workplace. Stop. Never do this again. If possible, gather some evidence. Because sometimes people intend to uh, blame victims. So, to avoid that... If you observe that a certain colleague is acting seductively towards you or is trying to coerce you, whether you're a man or a woman, obtain some evidence. You may record in one of the episodes at some point just because you want to avoid victim blaming. If they do not stop, seek redress from authorities. And if everything, the worst comes to the worst, is just better to resign from that workplace, especially if you are dealing with a, a difficult boss 
who keeps on coming against you, coming against you, you're going to resist for some time, but later on you'll find yourself falling to that and it will be weighing heavily upon you. It will be weighing heavily on your mind that you had done such a bad thing. What does the Bible say on sexual, sexual coercion? Ecclesiastes 7 verse 26. I find more bitter than a death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God will escape from her, but the sinner she will ensnare. So this is not talking not only about the woman. It can be both man or woman because both of sexes can be victims of feelings. So both of these can lay down snare uh, um, for for either sex. So just watch out. The man who pleases God or the woman who pleases God will escape from this type of snare. Having said this, may you please comment in the below section. What are your experiences in terms of sexual coercion in the workplace? Or what do you know to be some of the ways men or women can use? And what can you do in order to avoid falling victim to these types of um, situation? Thank you so much, guys. I hope this has been helpful to somebody who has been faced with um, sexual coercion or sexual advancement at the workplace. Thank you so much. Stay blessed.